morning. I'm going to welcome you to worship this morning. It's so glad to be back with you. Uh, Bill and I enjoyed a great time away in Tennessee in the cold air, which I think we brought back with us this morning. And somebody asked me this morning, uh, you know, what are we going to do anything to stay warm? And I said, absolutely, we're going to invite the Holy Spirit to set us on fire and warm us up. Amen? Amen. So let's do that this morning. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to warm us up this morning. Amen. Let's get excited about Jesus. Get on fire with Jesus this morning. Get on flame with the Holy Spirit this morning. Because God's going to speak to us. See, if we come here and we expect God to speak to us this morning, God will speak to us this morning. God will set our hearts on fire and we'll go out of here ablaze with the Holy Spirit. We'll go out of here. We'll be moved by the Holy Spirit. We'll be transformed by the Holy Spirit. And we will change the world that needs to be changed today. Amen. All right, so let's get excited about Jesus this morning and beyond this morning. We want to welcome you to Memorial United Methodist Church this morning. We're glad you're with us. If you're inviting, uh, on watching us on live stream, we're glad you're with us as well. If you're here for the first time or joining us for the first time, we would love to be part of this family. It's real easy to do that. Just contact us. Let the ushers know on the way out. Contact me by phone or by email or by Facebook or YouTube, however you want to do it. There's lots of wonderful ways to do it this, in our wonderful new ways of technology. We'd love to have you do that. Uh, today we uh, are remembering Christ's baptism. That will be referenced through our scripture. Uh, we're also remembering uh, God's people that are anointed with the power of the Holy Spirit through God's baptism as well. Uh, just a couple brief announcements. They're all in the bulletin. There's a couple meetings coming up this week. Tomorrow is a finance meeting at 5 p.m., there's also a trustees meetings. I believe that's at 7, is it, Claude? Claude, where are you? I think it's at 7 p.m. It's behind me in the ladies' Bible study room. And if you're part of the school board, there's a meeting at 6 p.m. on Tuesday as well. So this time, we're going to turn to our opening prayer. It's printed in your bulletin. Uh, you can pray that along silently, and I'm going to read that out loud this morning. Father, when we are feeling afraid, when we are feeling timid, Remind us of who you are and who we are in you. You are strong and courageous, the almighty King and loving Father. You have said in your word that as we wait upon you, we can have courage because you are with us. You are for us and you will empower us with the courage and strength we need for whatever is placed before us. Remind us of who you have created us to be and what you have empowered us to do. Lord, you are the courageous one, and we know you will keep your promise. Victory is on the other side. We boldly declare that fear, intimidation, Hesitation and doubt will no longer keep us from being who you have called us to be for the benefit of your kingdom in this community and the world. You will help us face and conquer our fears. You are a good father and you are faithful. We trust you. Amen. A call to worship this morning is found in your bulletin. It's from Psalm 121, verses 1 through 8. I will read the part of the leader, and you follow me and respond with the part of the people. And let's say like we mean it this morning, folks. Please stand as you are able. I lift my eyes to the hills. From whence does my help come from? The Lord will not let your foot be moved. The Lord who keeps you will not slumber. The Lord is your keeper. The sun shall not smite you by day. The Lord will keep you from all evil and will keep your life. This time we're going to share together the Apostles' Creed. If you guys could bring that up, please, on the overhead.
And we're going to repeat this all together. I believe the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he rose again, stood in heaven, and stood at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Won't you please be seated. Now the encouragement of the conference, since we've been gathering back together for in-person worship, we haven't been singing. And... Um, and, and I understand, I respect that, but if this is, this is a song that if we were doing and we were doing that, that there's, there's a leader part and there's a, there's a congregation part. So I know you can't sing it, but I'm going to give you um, four words. My heart sings hallelujah. And then when I point at you or gesture towards you, I want you to say, my heart sings. Okay, we're going to need to practice like, like a choir. We're, we're going to say four words. Here we go. My heart sings hallelujah. And we'll kind of do that in rhythm, and I'll just point at you, and you'll say, My heart sings hallelujah. Thank you for those of you brave enough to join in. The song, by the way, is called My Heart Sings Hallelujah. There you go. Silence has been broken With a child God has spoken Everything changes Everything changes Angels come with words of wonder Freedom from the curse we're under Everything changes Everything changes Oh, glory, glory in the highest God We praise you, Savior Savior to the lost and broken our Redeemer here to save us. My heart sings, heart sings hallelujah. Here today love's incarnation. He's come to seek and bring salvation. Everything changes, everything changes, oh, glory, glory in the highest God, we praise you, Savior, Savior to the lost and broken, Jesus, Jesus our Redeemer here to sings hallelujah come a little closer sing a little louder join with all the angels worship him come a little closer sing a little louder join with all the angels worship him Come a little closer, sing a little louder, join with all the angels, worship Him. Come a little closer, sing a little louder, join with all the angels, worship Him. Glory, glory in the highest God, we praise you, Savior, Savior to the lost and Jesus, Jesus, our 
Redeemer here to sing. Buzz, my heart sings, heart sings hallelujah. Join with all the angels, worship Him. Come a little closer, sing a little louder. Join with all the angels, worship Him. My heart sings, heart sings hallelujah. My heart sings, my heart sings hallelujah. this time we come before the throne of grace with confidence and boldness in our time of need as we share some of the requests and prayers of our people. For Jean Lindgren and family, for Bob Westerall and family, Patty passed from cancer, so keep them in our prayers especially. Dow Heckman and family, Katrina Villa Camp and family. For Cindy Lewis's nephew who died unexpectedly on Friday, uh, prayers for her sister Vicki and their family. For Denny Miller, uh, severe injuries in a car accident uh, just recently uh, for his back, I believe. Uh, for friend of uh, Leah and Mary Miller, Rodney Morrison, who has heart issues. Prayers for Leanne and Hugh Steckel, also Jim Hardy. Uh, prayers for Tom Zentner, who is in Advent Lake Placid uh, with pneumonia. Talked with him a couple times this week. He is recovering, but still needs our prayers, and he's also recovering from hip surgery. So keep him in your prayers. Also for uh, Cynthia Lynn, who is a friend of Nancy Reed. She's been diagnosed with cancer, uh, has been given three months to live without chemo and one year uh, with it. So please keep her and her family in your prayers. And for Gazella Soto, who regularly attends our church, uh, she's been diagnosed with a malignant tumor uh, in her abdomen, and she'll be starting chemotherapy tomorrow. Uh, Velma and I will be going to see her after church to pray and anoint her with oil. Um, and Laura Teal, you can contact with. I know uh, she's already contacted some of y'all, how you might be able to help her as far as uh, rides and, and other ways, food. Uh, she is uh, out of work, so she has no income right now, so keep that in mind as well. Also, special prayers uh, for our world and our nation right now. I'm sure you've uh, seen all the things that have been going on this past week. I will not be addressing those directly this week. I will be in my sermon next week. I want to have a very thoughtful and prayerful response to that. And I think in the light of the following Monday being Martin Luther King week, uh, that's a great Sunday to, to kind of talk about those things. So be mindful and prayerful as we pray on that as well. Let's go before the altar of God. Lord, we come before you today with boldness because you tell us to come before your throne of grace with boldness, to find the strength, the grace, the encouragement, the courage that we all need. And Lord, we not just come for ourselves, but we come for others, those that we have mentioned this morning by name, those that we think of right now, those that we carry in our hearts, in our lives, in our families, in our friendships, in our neighborhoods, all that we... Uh, those anxieties that we carry in our, in our minds, in our beds at night, as we lie awake even in the wee hours of the morning, we bring those all before you right now. And we know, Lord, that you are our God, that you are capable of ministering to us and to others and to all those that are in need, that you go with us, before us, and around us. So we come before you and we ask you, Lord, this morning to intercede. We ask you to deliver, to protect, to rescue folks that are going through these various places in their lives. We ask that you free and heal people from disease, from illness, from loneliness, from sadness, from mental illness, from hunger, from hurt, from pain, from struggles, from hate, from division, from fear, from isolation from prejudice, from all sorts of different things that are going on in this world, Lord. And we ask that you especially empower us this morning in this church, in the body of Christ, to be your people, Lord. To be the church, to be equipped with the spiritual armor, the spiritual weapons of warfare, especially with the gift of love. 
that we would be raised up by you through your power alone as you continue to go with us wherever we go, as you send us, as you stir us up, as you set us afire with your Holy Spirit, as you continue to encourage us, direct us, and lead us, and empower us to be who you've called us to be. We pray this through the words our Savior has taught us today in unison together with the body of Christ across the span of time, across the history, across this land, in all churches, in all places, across all denominations, in all different kinds of bodies, as one. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory now and forever. Amen. I want to hear these words from the third chapter of the book of Luke. Told when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was open and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. And this is the one who we put our faith and our trust in, the one who came from God. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste! of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst from my sight. Angels descending from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His good. Lost in his love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. 
praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior. Today we start a new sermon series, which we will be continuing up until Lent. We will be facing our fears. I think it's very appropriate for where we are in our history and all that's going on in our world, in our life, in this time. Now people are afraid of all sorts of different things, spiders and snakes and places where you get closed in, like maybe caves and small places, heights. I'm afraid of heights. Anybody else afraid of heights here? I get afraid and freaked out by heights. All sorts of little things, right? And big things. What are you afraid of? What makes your palms sweaty? What gives you knots in your stomach? What makes you uh, shake inside and maybe outside? What makes your mind sputter around? What do you worry about? What keeps you up at night? Is the fear of not having a job? Not having enough money to pay the bills, not having a home, is a fear over a loved one, of being alone in life, of an illness, a serious disease, or maybe even dying. Is a fear over what's going on in the world, what's going on in our country right now, or what might happen in the future, or what might happen to you. Well, this morning, God speaks to us through the words of Moses. And God wants to encourage us. God wants to give us strength. We do not have to live in fear. No matter what we face, no matter what we go through, no matter what happens in this world and in life. Because God goes with us. Trust God and do not be afraid. Our reading this morning comes from Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 2 through 8. And as we hear God speaking through Moses, through to God's people, and to all of us this morning, hear these words and take in these words. Please stand as you are able. I am now 120 years old. And I am no longer able to lead you. The Lord has said to me, You shall not cross the Jordan. The Lord your God himself will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy these nations before you. And you will take possession of the land. Joshua also will cross over ahead of you as the Lord said. And the Lord will do to them what he did to Sihon and Og, the king of the Amorites, whom he destroyed along with their land. The Lord will deliver them to you, and you must do to them all that I have commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the presence of all of Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you must go with this people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors to give them, and you must divide it among them as their inheritance. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. The word of God for the people of God. Please be seated and join me in the spirit of prayer. 
Oh, Lord God, who goes with us, we come before you this morning. And we are so grateful for your presence. We are so grateful that you are here with us, that you have chosen us to speak to us this morning. And we just ask that you come before us, that you come within us, that you stir us up this morning, Lord. You give us courage and strength because we need it, Lord. We're facing lots of giants. We're facing lots of stuff in our lives and in this world. And we can't do it by ourselves. We need you. Speak to us this morning, Lord. Give us strength not only for ourselves, but for others that are going through really tough stuff in our church, in our community, in our families, and in this world. Help us not to be afraid. Give us courage. Give us strength through your word this morning. Through your spirit that lives in us through Jesus Christ this morning. Release us, empower us for your mission in this world. We ask this, Lord, that your name be glorified, that your words be spoken through me this morning. So I am not even up visible up here, but that you alone are receive all praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Deuteronomy is Moses' final instructions to the generation of God's people. The the new generation of God's people entering the promised land. And Moses cannot go with them because with the previous generation, he disobeyed God. When God directed him to strike that big rock one time because the people were complaining, they wanted water, and God said, hit it one time and water will gush out to take care of all their needs. And Moses got frustrated with the people. And he hit that rock not once, not twice, but three times. And God told him that he was going to die before he entered that land. That Joshua was going to be his successor. So Moses recognizes that God has anointed Joshua to be the one to lead the people into the promised land, this new generation. And he, in essence, is passing on leadership to him, recognizing him before all the people. That he will be the one to actually even go before them and scout out the land. So Deuteronomy is, is really Moses preparing God's people for what lies ahead of them. Reminding them of their commitment to God. What God wants from them. How to live in relationship with God. How to live, period. Especially as they go into this new land. And while they're there to get rid of all the idols, all these nations that stand in God's way. And God will take care of them. And not to compromise their relationship with God in any way by cohabitating with these foreign idols and nations. And now God's people are there on the horizon. They're on the brink of receiving all God's promises. Entering a land, a home, with all the resources needed for countless generations to thrive in relationship with God and each other forever. But first, they have to go into a very strange land with hostile people. Encountering all these enemies, giants, lions, tigers, and bears in armies, oh my. Scary creatures. Moses knows they're going to have to face their fears. And he knows in order for them to receive God's promises, in order for them to have success in their future, they must have complete trust in God. So what does Moses do? He's already told them about their part of their relationship. He now directs them to God's commitment to them. God's special relationship with his people. The Lord God. God, the one and only true God of all. The one who is over all, who's created all. 
who's given substance and form to everything that's in life, including them and including all people. Who parts seas, who raises up mountains, can destroy mountains, puts the wind in the air, everything. This is their God. Their God. Their God is going to go first before them. Doesn't it feel good when somebody goes first before you to prepare the way? Doesn't that give you reassurance that that you're not the first one that has to go somewhere? They tell you about it or let let you know that it's okay. Well, this is what God's doing. He's going to prepare the way for them. So when they arrive, all the obstacles that stand in the way of God's promises will be removed through God's power operating in and through them. But it will be by God's power. And he directs them to the attention, this is the same Lord God who defeated the armies of the Ammonites in the past. And an army of giants, by the way, under King Og. This is their Lord God, the same God, who will give them victory over all as long as they remain committed to God. As long as they follow and trust God, do what Moses has told them to do, who is God's representative, and God is really the one telling them to do it. And Moses directs them to be strong, to be courageous, not afraid of anyone or anything based on their relationship with God. And in the very next breath, in the very next couple words, the literal translation Moses tells them to do is relax, calm down as they're standing there. Lower your blood pressure. Rest your nerves. Rest your spirits. Because the Lord God goes with you. (laughs) God will lead you. God will be on a journey with you the whole way. God's not going to leave you. He's not going to desert you. God is going to be there the entire time, bringing you where you need to be. So stop worrying, stop fretting, don't have anxiety. Be calm. Don't be afraid. And then God turns... For Moses turns his attention to Joshua. See, this message is for the community. So we need to hear this on a community level for us as a church, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, but also on an individual basis for Joshua as a leader. So we can also take this message individually as well. And he encourages Joshua. He gives strength to Joshua, who is now the leader of God's people on this mission for God's people to church, if you will. And he echoes the very same words, all the same words, really, that we've heard, with the charge to be fearless, relying on God's strength and power. And he encourages Joshua, along with God's people, to take hold of God's promises when they go into that land, partnering with God, confident. Their security is that God goes with them, unafraid. And what's really interesting to me is what he says after that. Do not be discouraged, which is translated as broken down, beaten down by fear. Other places in in Hebrew language in the Old Testament, when discourage is used, is mentioned as the breath taken out of you. You ever feel that way when you're scared of breath taken out of you? I felt that way. See, Moses knows that as he leads the people, and as the people go in there, they're going to see some scary stuff. They're going to see armies, people that are bigger, stronger than giants. They're going to see all sorts of stuff. And it could be real easy to give in to fear and say, I don't know about this. I don't think we can do this. I think they're too big. I think they're too bad. I think they're too scary. I don't know because I just don't know. And God says, don't you do that. Don't you give in to that fear. You focus on me. You follow me. 
You do what I tell you to do. You trust God and do not be afraid. Here's the thing. You see, God understands that we are human. That there are times when every one of us, no matter who we are, pastors included myself for sure, where we all struggle with anxiety, with worry, with different types of fear. That is why God tells us over and over again in the Bible, throughout the Bible, the Old and New Testament, 365 times to be exact, do not be afraid. That we do not have to live in fear. And God says this, Jesus says this, prophets say this, God's messenger says this, all different representatives of God say this throughout the Bible. And they say this to people just like us that are going through all different kinds of situations like us. People facing danger, adversity, and threats. Hostile spiritual forces, people, nations. Separation from loved ones, disease, death, everything you can think of, you can imagine that we could possibly ever go through in this world and in life. God re- saying to them and, and reminding us this morning that we do not have to be afraid of anyone, of anything in this world because of our relationship with God. Do you hear me, church? Our security is not found in the kings, kingdoms, leaders, presidents, governments of this world, no matter who they are or what they are or what they promise us. Not in what other people say and do, what they say about us, what they do to us. Not in what we have, not what we own, what we possess. Not in ourselves, not in human strength or power, but in the Lord our God. Amen? Amen. The God who goes before you, plural and individually. Making a way, a path through every obstacle you will ever encounter, you will ever face, you will ever come across in this life, in this world. The God who goes with you. And I want to spend a little time on that this morning. The God who goes with you because that's the essence of this message. There's three translations of the God who goes with you in this passage that you need to feel, you need to hear, you need to own, you need to internalize this morning individually and as a church, as the church. The first one is literally God walks with with you. Repeat it. God walks with you. And then you can personalize that for yourself too. That's the idea in in Hebrew is always the idea of God being on a journey with you through life. So that means there's no place you go without God. There's no situation in life you encounter without God. No matter where you are, God walks with you there. No matter what's happening in this world, no matter what you hear, no matter what's happening in your life, the good, the bad, the ugly, God walks with you. And by the way, that means there's also time God holds your hand tightly, by the way. God walks with you. The second translation, oh, this is a big one. God will not drop you. Repeat after me. God will not drop you. Do you feel that? God will not drop you. So if God will not drop you, that has to mean God is carrying you sometimes, right? If he's not dropping you, does that mean he's carrying you? He's carrying you. That means he's lifting you up. He's supporting you. Under his big, all-capable, almighty, all-powerful, all-loving, all-caring arms. He's lifting you above the evil and all that's going on in this world, the circumstances in your life. He's holding you up. And he will never, ever drop you. And there's a third one. And this is literal too. God will never leave you behind. Say it after me. God will never leave you behind. Wow. That means God will never desert you. God will hold, keeps you close to him. 
He wraps you in his arms. He holds you tight, by the way, in his arms. He surrounds you all over on all sides. He's protecting you. He's carrying you. He's holding you tight. And he's bringing you wherever he needs to bring you. He's protecting you. Oh, he will never let go of you no matter what. No matter what happens. As long as you follow him, as long as you trust him, as long as you keep 